Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. The Ministry of Environment uh, of Peru and the World Economic Forum. Uh, before we actually going to do the ceremony of, uh, of signing, uh, I would like to uh, introduce uh, first uh, Minister Manuel Pulgar Vidal Otalora uh, from Peru and also my uh, colleague uh, Rick Sammons uh, from the World Economic Forum. And I would like to ask uh, Rick Sammons maybe to give us the context uh, of this signing of this uh, uh, Memorandum of Understanding and then afterwards uh, uh, Minister Pulgar Vidal will give us his view from a Peruvian point of view. Thank you very much and uh, good afternoon everyone. As uh, participants here at the summit are well aware, climate change and its related impacts such as extreme weather events, food crises, water crises are are one of the most pressing uh, challenges that the world faces in the coming decades. Uh, indeed, uh, the forum itself uh, conducts a survey each year of perceived risks uh, to global welfare. And uh, this set of risks came in about to represent four of the top 10 risks in the most recent survey that was issued by the forum uh, earlier this year. And partly as a result of this, the forum uh, uh, responded positively to a, a suggestion by the UN Secretary General uh, last year to make uh, our multi-stakeholder platform available for th uh, some thinking and more specifically some action uh, by different stakeholders to advance progress on various aspects of mitigation adapta and adaptation related to climate change. And in Davos in January, uh, we organized what was for us an unprecedented a constellation of over 30 different uh, working sessions engaging business executives, experts, governmental leaders, international organizations and the like to try to figure out what might be a, a limited number of high impact uh, collective action undertakings that could reduce emissions or otherwise strengthen the resilience of economies in the face of these trends related to global warming. Uh, we uh, are viewing this as a process. This was not simply a, a single event. We uh, have committed to use our platforms uh, with various partners to try to advance a number of these types of significant scale uh, collective actions, public-private partnerships, uh, to support in a complementary way the negotiation process that is taking place in the UN. Uh, and in that spirit, uh, we had some discussions indeed here even uh, at this summit, but today we're gathered uh, specifically for the purpose uh, of signing an MOU, a Memorandum of Understanding, with the government of Peru on uh, an important aspect of this climate change collaboration. In December, uh, at, in Lima, the government of Peru will be hosting the most important climate change negotiations that will take place uh, in this year. And they anticipate, as I understand it, some 15,000 different participants. And obviously the eyes of the world will be upon Lima at that time because it is the following year when the international community has set a goal of actually arriving at a strategy, at arriving at an agreement in the UN and a, an associated set of other things that would help take the international community to the next much more concrete step toward mobilizing action on climate change. The collaboration that we're going to be signing uh, today between the Forum and the government of Peru is to, is to uh, in Lima, advance the progress of some of these uh, high-impact public-private cooperations on different dimensions of global warming in preparation for contributing to a successful outcome of this UN process in 2015. We will convene in particular uh, under the umbrella of the Peruvian Partnership Dialogue, this set of conversations. And uh, we, uh, we welcome very much the cooperation with the government of Peru. We, uh, we take very seriously uh, the responsibility we have as uh, perhaps the world's leading uh, convener of multi-stakeholder dialogue and action on various types of regional and global issues. We think this is an extremely good and appropriate use of that platform. 
And so it's with, uh, it's with pride and a sense of significant responsibility that we, uh, we undertake this cooperation with you, uh, Minister, and your government uh, later this year. Thank you very much. Thank you. Gracias. Minister Bulgar Vidal, why this is important for Peru? Thank you. Let me say first how pleased I am to be here signing this MOU with the World Economic Forum. And let me say or give four very brief reflection notes to try to recognize why this is important to us. First, I think that having the web as a partner, it is important not only because the important role that the WEF, the World Economic Forum, is playing, but also because the role that Peru is playing as the hosting country of the next COP20. We, as a country, are playing a triple role as a host, as an incoming presidency, as a country that has their own challenges to try to develop their own climate agenda. In that sense, the motto of the World Economic Forum improving the state of the world, it is exactly what we need to bring the climate debate to the debate on development, on economy, and on future. And I think that in that sense, having the World Economic Forum, it is one very important step forward to try to bring solution to this debate. My second reflection, it is around the role of the business sector. And in that sense, as Rich has already told, it is very important the role that the World Economic Forum has already played, bringing, bringing the climate debate to the different sessions. I went to Davos last January, and it has been very important what business sector has, it, it is discussing to try to identify what is the role for trying to bring solution to what the world is waiting to us, is waiting solutions framed by this concept of sense of urgency and level of ambition. We need to move quickly to try to have, by the end of December of 2015, a very strong agreement that can move the world to a next step, to a next generation measures. My third reflection, it is around the importance of having the World Economic Forum to create atmosphere of confidence. In this discussion, in this debate, there are different actors with different expectations, with different needs. There are not only different countries, but also different sectors that are trying to show their expectation and also to show us their needs. And in that sense, the World Economic Forum can bring the business sector in an atmosphere of confidence to try to talk with the civil society, with the indigenous people, with the government, and to create public-private partnership to bring solution to this very urgent debate, the climate debate. And my fourth reflection it is that with the World Economic Forum, I'm sure that we are not going just to organize a business day during the COP. What we are going is to bring the business sector to the core discussion or to the core debate in this climate uh, conference. Because we know and we believe that to try to find solution, we need the business sector, as we need also the civil society and the business groups. But we don't need it in a separate way. We don't need it in a parallel events. We need discussing with them to try to bring solutions to the planet. And in that sense, we feel that the World Economic Forum can create this atmosphere of confidence to try to bring the business sector to show what they have already done or what are their suggestions, their proposals, their solutions, to try to find together every sector what we are seeking and what we know we can achieve. We have a lot of expectation in the next COP20. We know that Peru can do it and can play a very important role. And we want to achieve, and we want to have as an output of the COP20, a very strong draft agreement to be signed in Paris in the next year. 
But on the other hand, we know that we can play a role to try to unblock the discussions around finance. We can bring some kind of implementation or pilot projects around RED+. Plus. We can also bring some content to what it is called adaptation. We also can play a role regarding what it is the loss and damage debate. We also can do something to try to have the capacity building and transfer of technology solutions as measure of implementation. So with the World Economic Forum, we can work a lot in trying to achieve and to fulfill with that objective and with that goal. So this is why we consider as the government of Peru, as a minister of the environment, that this is one important step in our objective to be and to have success during the COP20. Thank you. Thank you, Minister. We're, we're going to proceed now with the signature of the Memorandum of Understanding, and should you have any questions, we're happy to address them afterwards. Swiss Daily NZZ in Zurich and based in Lima. Desde este año estoy cubriendo los países. From this year, I'm starting to cover the Pacific Alliance. The World Economic Forum, Mr. Samans, if you could say what concrete actions could uh, take place in preparing this uh, event in uh, December from your side. I have already understood that uh, Minister Pulgar Vidal would like to have the, the business aspect in, in, intertwined in all the discussions, not in separate events. But what could the WEF do to prepare this, uh, this event in, in Peru? As I do we have already some ideas? We, we do. Scraping. We do. Uh, insofar as that this is, we don't view this as an event. We view this as a very important process. And, and for the, uh, the COP in Lima, which of course is uh, over a series of days, is a very important opportunity to bring the governmental world into direct discussion with some of the companies and NGOs and other experts in a few key areas. So while I don't know exactly what the outcome will be yet, because it is a process that's going to unfold over the next several months, I can tell you a few of the areas in which we've already been doing some preparatory work. Uh, one is in the area of deforestation. Uh, this is one of the problems where you don't necessarily need a 200 uh, government uh, treaty to affect major action because the, the sourcing of uh, tropical forest products often tend to be quite concentrated in a number of companies. And so we are engaging in discussions with some of the most important uh, companies in that trade to see whether it might be possible to get a critical mass of them to agree to certain 
uh, behaviors uh, in, so, in avoiding the sourcing of unsustainably harvested forestry products. That's one example. Another uh, example I might give you would be in the realm of uh, climate smart agriculture. So many countries, because of the stress on water supplies that uh, global warming creates, are thinking much more seriously about how you improve the efficiency of their agricultural production, and particularly in the use of water, but other dimensions as well. And this dovetails with a multi-year piece of work in the forum right now on developing public-private interventions in agricultural value, value chains to move uh, our conception of development assistance on food security from a grant mentality uh, to uh, developing uh, sustainable value chains so that they have a self-sustaining effect. And so this piece of work will be looking about how we can introduce climate smart elements into those uh, developing country agricultural production value chains. There are a few other areas, including with respect to um, short-term climate pollutants, which have a very high degree of potency. They don't get as much attention as uh, carbon dioxide. But here again, it may be possible through the cooperation of uh, concentrated groups of uh, producers and consumers of those types of short-term climate uh, pollutants, uh, that if they were to agree on reducing or otherwise controlling and monitoring uh, their emissions of things like methane, that could have a very significant contribution and could, could help uh, improve the political environment, give people a sense of confidence, as the minister was saying, that this is not an insoluble problem. It actually is possible to make some very important interim progress, even as the negotiations unfold and even as the technology uh, and research needs to advance for longer-term solutions. So these are a few examples of the kinds of things that uh, we are preparing. No, it is not the first. Yesterday, or two days ago, we have just signed an agreement with COICA, the Corporación de Organizaciones Indígenas de la Cuenca Amazonica, because we think, we believe, that the only way to move toward an agreement is in a very open and transparent way. And we should avoid what we had suffered in Warsaw in with some of the biggest NGOs of the world go or went sorry outside the room because they didn't believe that there were the atmosphere of confidence that this kind of negotiation needs. So we have already signed with COICA. Now we are signing with the World Economic Forum. Probably we're going to have an agreement with the civil society groups. We are working on that because the only way to bring solution is we, it is if we work together. There's another question there. Front. Hi, Tiffany Grabsky, SNL Financial. Uh, Ministro Pulgar, I wanted to know um, if you could just develop why, why Peru wanted COP20 to take place in Lima, in Peru, and if they themselves have it, kind of goals for Peru specifically that this agreement or this um, event will help change in the environmental aspects that are affecting Peru right now. Interesting question. It is not that we have become in crisis, but we believe that the COP is a good opportunity. It is a good opportunity first to show how well Peru is performing in economy and social inclusiveness. It is also a good opportunity to try to raise our public climate agenda, because this is the time in which, and that is the third reason, that we can bring to the country what we believe that it is, this is not a debate of or for environmentalists. This is a debate of development, this is an economic debate, this is a debate on the future. So this is opportunity to bring all the sectors to discuss how we are seeking, how we are looking the future of the country, the future of our economy, the future of our development. And the, and the fourth reason is that we are completely sure that we can play a very important role as a developing country, as a country who is uh, performing a very good uh, development and growing an economy. 
a country with a lot of biodiversity, a country, a multicultural country. So, so we have a lot of elements that can bring confidence to the different government, states, sectors and players to bring it together to the table to try to get an agreement by the end, a draft agreement by the end of this year, and we hope an agreement already signed by the end of the next year. Any, any specific goals for Peru, or Peru in particular for the environment? Sure. We have already identified five topics of interest that have a lot of coincidence of what uh, Rick has already told. We want to work on forest, indigenous peoples and conservation, that is the first topic. The second one, it is regarding the mountains, the glacier melting and um, water security. The third one, it is oceans, because we have one of the most richest oceans based in one fishery activity, because the cold current of Humboldt. The fourth one, it is energy, probably the most important topic in this discussion. And the fifth one, even though Peru has not, is not still suffering what many countries are suffering, it's sustainable cities. The role of the cities in trying to mitigate uh, CO2 emission. So that is one part. On the other hand, we are working very, very strongly in trying to update our climate agenda, our climate sorry, strategy, and also to try to develop some very specific uh, measures uh, regarding to reuse of pet, uh, some kind of measures regarding to the use of incandescent, to forbid the use of incandescent bulbs, uh, among many others. And also, I hope that in this year with the Ministry of Finance, we can begin the, to think our, our, about our strategy for a, a green economy. And also, we should work and we should show that we can be a model. We should work in our national contribution because there is a mandate that the country should put on the table the national contribution by the first quarter of 2015. So we are, con we are working on that based on what it is called the Plan CC. That is a prospective research of how we are thinking or how we are looking our economy in the future with low carbon emissions. Have a question? Yes, please, lady here in the front. Thank you. My name is Patricia Moran with American Airlines Nexus Magazine. And I have a question for the WFE, whomever wants to answer. It's about the data that you have about CO2 emissions. Because um, you're helping the non-development countries for diminishing their CO2. But what about the North and the development countries in their emissions? Well, our work um, is not limited to developing countries. Uh, for example, another area that I didn't mention, which is financing for a sustainable infrastructure or industry. The discussions and the work that's going on, uh, while they have a focus on developing countries because there's a huge uh, for capital, it's, it's global in scope. Uh, so I think if, if your question is, are, why are we focusing only on developing countries? The data that we have. The of CO2 emissions compared to the south, yeah. for example. I'm not sure I can, well, first of all, we, we do not ourselves as an institution uh, collect uh, CO2 data internationally. There are other international institutions that, uh, that provide that function. Um, uh, and so we could, we could talk to you offline, perhaps, if you're looking for that information. We can point you in the direction of those sources. It is, it is true historically, obviously, that the North, as you put it, is primarily responsible for the buildup of the stock of emissions in the atmosphere. However, the flow is changing quite dramatically insofar as China has become uh, the leading emitter. Uh, and growth, economic growth, has uh, shifted uh, uh, quite significantly in the last decade from traditional uh, northern OECD countries to major emerging market economies. So the, the growth in emissions, the share of it, is increasingly 
uh, assumed by, uh, by, uh, by developing countries, so it's a shifting pattern. But I, I'm unable at this moment off the top of my head to give you precise statistics, but I would be happy to point you in the direction of where you can find them. Any other questions? If that's not the case, then I thank you for having joined us here and wish you a nice afternoon. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Gracias. Gracias. Look forward to working with you. Okay. Muchas gracias. Encantado de verlo nuevamente.